She accused me of cheating and then claimed she was pregnant, but when I demanded proof, everything started unraveling. Now, after a shocking revelation, I'm left wondering if I'll ever trust again. At 28, navigating significant drama has unfortunately become a recent theme in my life. My ex-girlfriend, Sarah, a pseudonym, and I ended our tumultuous two-year relationship a few months ago after discovering some shocking truths. Sarah and I first crossed paths at a party through mutual friends and quickly clicked. The first year of our relationship was idyllic. We shared similar interests, loved spending time together, and even talked about our future. I'm a software engineer, while Sarah works as a graphic designer. Despite our demanding careers, we made time for each other, enjoying spontaneous weekend getaways, trying new restaurants, and binge-watching TV shows on lazy Sundays. We introduced each other to our families and everything seemed perfect. But over time, things started to unravel. Initially, Sarah voiced concerns about how much time I spent at work and my close friendships with certain women. I brushed these off as normal relationship issues, but her jealousy and possessiveness soon escalated. She became increasingly upset if I spent time with female friends, even in group settings, and began scrutinizing my phone and questioning every text or call I received. One memorable incident involved dinner with my best friend Mike and his girlfriend while Sarah canceled due to work. That night, Sarah called me in tears, accusing me of lying about my whereabouts after seeing a Snapchat story from a mutual friend who was at the same restaurant. It took hours to calm her down and prove my innocence. Things deteriorated further when I began a major project at work which required extra hours and late nights. Sarah had a hard time dealing with this, frequently calling me during the day, showing up at my office unannounced, and even following me to catch me in the act. Despite my reassurances, introducing her to my co-workers, sharing my location, and contemplating quitting the project, nothing seemed to ease her anxiety. The constant accusations and lack of trust were exhausting. The breaking point came when Sarah accused me of cheating with a co-worker named Emily. After seeing work-related text between Emily and me, Sarah completely lost it. One evening, she showed up at my office while Emily and I were working on a presentation. Bursting into the conference room, she screamed and cried, accusing Emily of trying to steal me away and hurling insults. Despite my efforts to calm her, she became hysterical, threw a potted plant, which missed me, and security had to escort her out. Emily was understandably shaken and the next day I had to explain the situation to my boss. He was sympathetic but warned me that such incidents couldn't happen again. Although Emily remained professional, the atmosphere became awkward between us, and some colleagues began treating me as if I were the guy with the crazy ex-girlfriend. After the incident, it became evident that our relationship couldn't continue. I took a day off work and went to Sarah's apartment to end things. I explained that her constant mistrust and accusations had become unbearable, affecting not just our relationship but also my work and friendships. Sarah didn't handle it well. The conversation quickly devolved into yelling, crying, and name-calling. She accused me of never loving her, using her, and cheating throughout our relationship. In the heat of the moment, she even threw some of my belongings out of her apartment window. It was a chaotic scene. As I was leaving, she threatened to ruin my life and make me pay for breaking her heart. At the time, I dismissed it as an emotional outburst, feeling relieved to be free from the relationship. In the weeks that followed, Sarah kept trying to reach me, calling, texting, and even showing up at places she knew I frequented. Her messages ranged from begging for another chance to threatening to expose me as a cheater. I blocked her number on all social media platforms, and eventually she seemed to get the hint and backed off. I spent the next few weeks focusing on getting my life back on track, immersing myself in work, hitting the gym more often, and reconnecting with friends I had neglected during my time with Sarah things started to feel normal again. Then, last week, while enjoying a quiet Friday evening at home, Sarah unexpectedly showed up at my door. She looked pale and exhausted. Before I could react, she blurted out that she was pregnant and that the baby was mine. Stunned and disbelieving, I struggled to process the news. We had always been careful, and given how our relationship had ended, I wondered if this was a scheme to win me back. Sarah claimed she was about two months pregnant, which coincided with the period when our relationship was falling apart. I invited her in, more out of shock than anything else. We sat in my living room, where she explained that she had missed her period, taken a home test and confirmed it with a doctor. I told her I needed time to process this, and offered her a glass of water before retreating to the kitchen to clear my head. When I returned, I found her going through my phone which I had left on the coffee table. I confronted her and she claimed she was just checking the time, but it felt like a breach of trust I had grown accustomed to. I told her that before I could accept what she was saying, I needed concrete proof such as a paternity test. Sarah was upset and accused me of not trusting her, which felt ironic given our history. She pleaded for me to believe her, but all I could think about were the times she had accused me of lying and cheating. I insisted on a paternity test and medical proof of the pregnancy. Sarah grew angry, hurling insults and accusing me of cowardice for not taking responsibility. She threatened to tell our mutual friends and my family that I was abandoning her and the child. Then she stormed off, slamming the door behind her. Since then, I've been a wreck, 
I can't concentrate at work. I'm struggling with sleep and I feel constantly on edge. I question whether I'm being too harsh. What if she really is pregnant? Yet another part of me wonders if this is a manipulation tactic. I've spent hours researching false pregnancy claims and paternity rights. Although I've considered reaching out to Sarah, I remember how toxic our relationship had become and how much happier I've been since the breakup. I haven't shared this with anyone. Neither my family nor my best friend Mike I'm unsure of what to do. Am I wrong for not believing her and demanding proof? Should I have handled the situation differently? I keep replaying the conversation in my mind, wondering if I missed something. Sarah did look different, tired and stressed, but could it simply be from the aftermath of our breakup? And why wait two months to tell me if she's truly pregnant? The thought of Sarah spreading the news weighs heavily on me. My parents would be devastated if they believed I was abandoning a pregnant girlfriend, and I can only imagine how my friends would react. I've always prided myself on being a reliable person, and the idea of being perceived as a deadbeat dad is distressing. But at the same time, I can't accept this without verification. Sarah's past behavior has eroded my trust in her word alone, and bringing a child into the world is a massive responsibility, one that I'm not sure either of us is prepared for, especially given the state of our relationship. I've been contemplating reaching out to some of our mutual friends to see if they have any insight, but I'm concerned about stirring up rumors before I have a clear understanding of what's really happening. What if Sarah hasn't shared this news with anyone else yet? I don't want to be the one to spread potentially false information. On the other hand, there's a nagging fear that it might be true. I'm not prepared to become a father. Sarah and I had discussed the idea of having children in the distant future, but never as something immediate. The thought of being tied to Sarah for the rest of my life, especially given how toxic our relationship had become, is overwhelming. I've even wondered if the might not be mine. Given how accusatory Sarah was about my fidelity, could she have been projecting her own issues? Could there have been someone else involved? It's a distressing thought, but I can't ignore any possibility. The more I think about it, the more confused and frustrated I become. I feel trapped with no good options. If I reach out to Sarah for more information, am I opening myself up to further manipulation? If I ignore her, Am I potentially abandoning my child? I know I need to act, but I'm paralyzed by indecision. Every option seems fraught with potential pitfalls. I keep hoping she'll reach out with more information or agree to my request for proof, but so far there's been nothing but silence. Part of me wonders if I should just agree to whatever Sarah wants to keep the peace, but I know that's not the right approach. If there is a child involved, they deserve parents who are committed and certain not someone who's just trying to avoid conflict. I've even considered seeking legal advice, but that feels like such a drastic step. What if this turns out to be a misunderstanding or a false alarm? Would involving lawyers at this stage be an overreaction? This whole situation has forced me to reevaluate our relationship. Were there signs I missed? Red flags I ignored? I thought I was being a good boyfriend by trying to reassure her and prove my faithfulness, but did I inadvertently enable her behavior? Should I have ended things sooner? It's been a week since Sarah showed up at my door, and I feel no closer to a resolution. Each passing day feels like a ticking clock. If she is pregnant, decisions will need to be made soon, but how can I decide anything when I'm unsure of the basic facts? I keep questioning whether I'm wrong for insisting on proof. Should I have been more sympathetic or more trusting, or am I justified in my caution given our history? I honestly don't know anymore. So here I am, turning to the internet for advice. I realize this is a complex situation, and maybe I haven't provided all the details needed for a full judgment but I'm at my wit's end. I need an outside perspective. Am I wrong for not believing my ex-girlfriend and insisting on proof of her pregnancy, or am I justified in my caution given our past? What would you do in my situation? Update 1. Hey everyone, it's been about three weeks since my original post and a lot has happened. I wanted to provide an update on the situation with Sarah and her pregnancy claim. First, I want to thank everyone who commented on my original post. Your advice and perspectives have really helped me gain some clarity. Many of you suggested that I should stand firm and insist on proof, while others pointed out that I need to prepare for the possibility that Sarah might actually be pregnant. A few days after our confrontation, Sarah reached out via text. She apologized for her earlier outburst and acknowledged that my doubts were understandable. She agreed to provide medical proof of her pregnancy and to undergo a paternity test once it was feasible. I was relieved to see her taking a more measured approach, though I remained cautious. We arranged to meet at a local coffee shop, a public place to avoid any potential drama and to maintain civility. When we met, Sarah seemed different from how she had appeared at my door. She was calmer and more composed. She handed me an envelope with ultrasound images and a doctor's report confirming her pregnancy. According to the documents, Sarah was about 10 weeks along, which matched the timeline she had previously given me. The ultrasound images were overwhelming. The reality of the situation hit me with a rush of emotions. We spent hours talking. Sarah explained that she had discovered the pregnancy just a week before visiting me and was unsure how to tell me, especially given our rocky breakup. She admitted that her approach, showing up unannounced and making demands, had been misguided and apologized for it. I listened carefully, trying to remain open-minded. I shared my perspective, explaining how her past behavior had made it difficult for me to trust her, and how the sudden news had left me feeling unprepared. We discussed our options, 
Sarah expressed her desire to keep the baby but understood if I wasn't ready to take on fatherhood. She said she wouldn't pressure me but hoped I would be involved in the child's life. I told her I needed time to process everything, and we agreed to wait for a safe time to perform a non-invasive paternity test, ideally around the 12th week of pregnancy. After our meeting, I felt somewhat better, though still overwhelmed. I decided it was time to inform my family and close friends. I started with my parents, who were stunned. My mom was torn between excitement at the prospect of becoming a grandmother and concern over the circumstances. My dad was skeptical, reminding me of how tumultuous my relationship with Sarah had been. They both supported my decision to get a paternity test and advised me to proceed cautiously. Next, I told my best friend Mike he was surprised but supportive, offering to be there for me through the process, whatever my decision. He also suggested I might want to consult a lawyer to understand my rights and responsibilities. In the following weeks, Sarah and I kept in touch through text. She updated me on her doctor's visits and how she was feeling. Navigating this new dynamic with someone from my past was strange. Then, about a week ago, Sarah called me panicked. She said she had started bleeding and was heading to the hospital. I rushed to meet her there. The next few hours were a blur of medical tests, anxious waiting, and intense conversations with doctors. Eventually, we learned that Sarah had suffered a miscarriage. The doctor explained that early miscarriages are common and not anyone's fault. I was stunned. I hadn't fully come to terms with the idea of becoming a father, and now it was all over. Sarah was devastated. Despite our issues, seeing her in such pain was heartbreaking. I stayed with her until she was discharged. The drive back to her place was quiet, and when we arrived, Sarah broke down. She apologized again for her handling of the situation, saying she had been scared and unsure how to proceed. She acknowledged that her past behavior, her jealousy and accusations had been wrong and that losing the baby made her realize how much she had messed up between us. I listened, feeling a complex mix of emotions. I was saddened by the loss of a potential child, despite my uncertainty about fatherhood. Yet I also felt a sense of relief which then made me feel guilty. A part of me still wondered if the whole situation had been real. I asked Sarah if she had shared the news with anyone else. She said no, that she had been waiting until after the first trimester to tell her family and friends. So, only my parents, Mike and I knew about the situation? That night we talked extensively about the pregnancy, our failed relationship, and what might come next. Sarah mentioned she planned to start therapy to address her trust issues and jealousy. She didn't ask to reconcile or manipulate the situation which I appreciated. I told her I needed some time and space to process everything. She understood and agreed that it would be best if we didn't see each other for a while. As I left Sarah's apartment that night I felt a mix of exhaustion and relief. The emotional roller coaster of the past few weeks had been draining. Now a week later I'm still trying to process everything. I've started seeing a therapist to help me work through my feelings about the situation. Having a neutral person to talk to has been beneficial. I've also been reflecting on my relationship with Sarah and my own actions. While I still stand by my decision to ask for proof of the pregnancy, I recognize there were moments when I could have communicated better or been more understanding of her insecurities. Sarah and I have exchanged a few texts since that night. She's been attending therapy and feels it's helping her understand her behavior more clearly. She's apologized again for how she treated me and for the way she initially handled the pregnancy news. I'm uncertain about our future. Romantically, it seems unlikely we'll get back together given everything that's transpired. However, I'm open to the possibility of building a friendship once we've both had time to heal and grow. Regarding the pregnancy, I still have doubts. The medical documents appeared genuine, and the hospital confirmed the miscarriage. Yet, given our history, a part of me remains skeptical. For my own peace of mind, I've decided to accept that it was real and move forward. This experience has taught me valuable lessons about communication, trust, and the enduring impact of past actions on relationships. I'm trying to apply these lessons to become a better person and partner in the future. My parents and Mike have been incredibly supportive throughout this ordeal. They've listened, offered advice, and simply been there for me. I'm thankful for their strong support system. Looking back at my initial post, I can see how bewildered and unsettled I was. I still believe I was right to ask for proof, but I now understand why Sarah might have reacted the way she did. Fear and hormones can drive people to act out of character. In response to those who asked, no, I haven't shared the details with any of our mutual friends. Sarah and I agreed that it's a private matter and that spreading it would only stir up unnecessary drama and gossip. As for work, things have fortunately settled down. The tension with Emily and my other co-workers has eased and I've focused on my projects which has been a welcome distraction. I realize this update might not meet everyone's expectations. Life seldom follows neat, clear-cut paths. It's messy and often leaves us with more questions than answers. I'm still processing everything and know it will take time to fully come to terms with it. For now, I'm taking it one day at a time, concentrating on my personal growth and healing. I appreciate all the advice and support. It's been invaluable. If anything significant changes, I'll provide another update. For now, I'm focused on moving forward, learning from this experience, and working towards a better future. Update 2 I had hoped to conclude my story with the last update. It seemed like a somewhat decent ending, 
But life has a way of complicating things. It's been about two months since my last post, and my anger from everything that's happened hasn't subsided. Just when I thought the situation with Sarah couldn't get more complicated, I was proven wrong. After the miscarriage, Sarah and I had limited contact. We exchanged occasional texts, mostly with her updating me on her therapy progress and me responding politely. I was still working through everything and trying to move on. Work was going well. I'd immersed myself in a new project which served as a welcome distraction. Relations with my co-workers, including Emily, had mostly returned to normal, and I was even starting to dating again, though I hadn't gone on any dates yet. Then, about three weeks ago, I received a call from an unfamiliar number. When I answered, a man's voice asked if I was my name. After I confirmed, he introduced himself as Robert and said we needed to talk about Sarah my stomach sank. I asked who he was, and he revealed that he was Sarah's ex-boyfriend. Apparently, they had been together for a few weeks during a break Sarah and I had taken. I remember that break. It was after a particularly bad argument and we had spent about two months apart. Robert contacted me to share some information he believed I needed to hear. We arranged to meet at a local bar the following evening. The next 24 hours were filled with anxiety as I considered the implications of what he might reveal. Despite my reluctance, I knew I had to face whatever was coming. When we met, Robert appeared surprisingly composed. He was about my age and seemed like an ordinary guy. He bought us a beer and got straight to the point. Sarah had lied to me. The baby wasn't mine, it was his. I felt like I had been punched in the stomach. Robert explained that he and Sarah had continued their relationship on and off even after Sarah and I had reconciled. Their last encounter had occurred about a week before Sarah and I broke up for good. He showed me text messages between him and Sarah from months earlier. In them, Sarah expressed her unhappiness with me and her fear of being alone, revealing that she had stayed in the relationship out of fear. The texts included her panicking about the pregnancy and her plans. One particularly shocking message from Sarah to Robert, Dated just days before she came to me with the pregnancy claim, read, I have a plan. I'm going to tell my name. The baby is his. He makes good money and he's always wanted kids. He'll take care of us. The realization that she had cheated on me and tried to manipulate me into raising another man's child was devastating. Robert, feeling guilty after the miscarriage, thought I deserved to know the truth. I thanked him for his honesty, though part of me wished I could go back to being ignorant. We finished our beers in silence, each lost in thought. Before leaving, Robert apologized for his role in the situation. I couldn't bring myself to hate him, as I appreciated his decision to come clean. After Robert left, I sat at the bar for a long time trying to absorb what I had learned. The bartender, sensing my distress, gave me a free drink. I went home that night feeling numb, unable to eat or sleep. The following day, I called in sick to work. I needed time to process my emotions. I spent the day oscillating between anger and disbelief. How could Sarah have done this? How could she lie so comprehensively? And how had I been so blind? Reflecting on her previous accusations of cheating and her jealous outbursts, it became clear they were projections of her own behavior. After a day of contemplation, I knew I had to confront Sarah, I couldn't let this go unanswered. I texted her to arrange a meeting, which she likely thought was a routine check-in. We met at the same coffee shop where she had shown me the ultrasound pictures. As soon as she saw me, she saw me, she knew something was amiss. Before she could speak, I laid everything out. The meeting with Robert, the text messages, and all the new information I had. At first, Sarah seemed poised to deny it. But then she broke down in tears, apologizing and saying she never intended for things to go this far. I asked how she could lie so deeply and attempt to trap me into raising a child that wasn't mine. She explained she was scared and desperate, hoping that if she could get me to accept the baby, everything would work out. I told her that what she had done was unforgivable. She had not only betrayed my trust in the worst way but also been willing to drag an innocent child into her deceit. Sarah pleaded for forgiveness, saying she would do anything to make amends but I knew there was no fixing this. The trust between us was irrevocably shattered. I told her I never wanted to see or hear from her again and hoped she would continue therapy because she clearly needed help. Then I stood up and walked out, ignoring her desperate pleas for me to stay. The next few days were a blur. I informed my parents and Mike of what had happened, and they were furious on my behalf. My mom wanted to call Sarah and confront her, but I asked her not to. I just wanted to be done with the situation. I also decided to inform a few mutual friends to preempt any potential misinformation from Sarah I didn't go into all the details. I simply said Sarah had cheated and lied about the pregnancy. Most were shocked and supportive. One friend admitted she had suspected Sarah might be cheating and had seen her with another man but didn't realize it was serious. She apologized for not coming forward sooner. I was hurt that she hadn't said anything earlier but I understood her reluctance to get involved. At work, I finally confided in Emily about everything that had transpired. Her response was incredibly supportive and understanding. She admitted she had always felt something was off about Sarah but had held back from saying anything negative about my girlfriend. Through all this, Emily and I have grown closer and I'm starting to see her in a new light. Who knows, there might be potential for something more in the future. Since since our confrontation at the coffee shop, I haven't heard from Sarah I've blocked her number and all her social media accounts. A mutual friend informed me that Sarah has moved back in with her parents and continues with therapy. Part of me hopes she gets the help she needs but mostly I just want her out of my life permanently. Reflecting on our relationship, 
It's clear now how toxic it was. Sarah's jealousy and insecurity weren't just minor issues, they were indicators of deeper problems. I now realize I should have ended things much sooner. I've been contemplating why I stayed with Sarah for so long and endured her behavior. I think part of it was fear of being alone, another part was the misguided hope that I could fix her and earn her trust, and I'm ashamed to admit, a part of me enjoyed feeling needed, even if it was in an unhealthy way. Coming to terms with the loss of the future I had envisioned has been one of the hardest parts. Even though I had doubts about the pregnancy, a part of me had started to imagine what being a might be like. Having that possibility snatched away, only to discover it was all a lie, has been painful. However, I also feel relieved, relieved that I learned the truth before it was too late and that I'm no longer bound to Sarah for the rest of my life. In the past few weeks, I've focused on myself. I've resumed running, a hobby I had abandoned during my relationship with Sarah. I'm reading more, spending time with friends, and even considering a solo trip. Work has been a great distraction. I've immersed myself in a new project at work and my boss has noticed. He's hinted at a potential promotion if I continue performing well. It's nice to have something positive to concentrate on. As for dating, I'm not ready to dive into anything serious yet. I need time to heal and rebuild my trust, but I'm open to meeting someone new when the time is right. This experience has taught me a lot about myself, relationships, and trust. I've learned the importance of trusting your instincts. If something feels off, it probably is. To those who followed my story from the start, thank you for your support and advice. You helped me gain clarity when I was too close to the situation to see it. If there's one takeaway from my story, it's this. Trust is invaluable, and once it's broken, it's incredibly hard to restore. Don't stay in a relationship where you're constantly questioning your partner or yourself. And if someone reveals their true nature, believe them the first time. As for me, I'm taking things one day at a time. Some days are more difficult than others, but overall, I'm doing okay. I'm looking forward to the future and confident that I can face whatever challenges come my way. This will be my final update on this matter. It's time for me to close this chapter and move on. Thank you all again for your support throughout this turbulent journey. Here's to new beginnings and better days ahead. It's been about 10 months since my last update and I didn't think I'd be writing another one. I thought the chapter with Sarah was closed for good, but life has a way of surprising us. After everything with Sarah and the revelation about her cheating, I focused on moving forward. I threw myself into work, continued with therapy, and began rebuilding my social life. Things were going well. The promotion my boss hinted at came through, and I'm now leading my own team on a major project, which has been challenging but rewarding. Emily and I have been working closely, and I have to admit there's been some flirting between us. We haven't acted on it yet, partly because I'm wary of getting involved with a co-worker after everything that happened with Sarah, but the attraction is definitely there. Then, about a month ago, everything changed again. While at the grocery store one evening, just picking up dinner supplies, I ran into Robert, Yes, the same Robert who had revealed the truth about the baby. We were both stunned by the coincidence. Robert asked if I wanted to grab a coffee and catch up. I hesitated at first, questioning whether I really wanted to revisit everything. But my curiosity got the better of me and I agreed. Over coffee, Robert updated me on Sarah's situation. After our last encounter, she'd had a complete breakdown, quitting her job, moving back in with her parents, and diving into intensive therapy. Robert had been in touch with her parents, feeling a sense of responsibility for her current state. He told me that Sarah had recently discovered she was pregnant again, and this time it was definitely his child. Although they weren't rekindling their relationship, Robert intended to co-parent with her. I was filled with anger. Why should Sarah get to have a baby after deceiving me about the last one? Yet I also felt a sense of relief, glad that I wasn't in Robert's position tied to Sarah for the foreseeable future. Robert seemed genuinely excited about fatherhood but admitted he was anxious about co-parenting with Sarah given their complicated past. He mentioned that Sarah had made significant progress in therapy, addressing her trust issues and manipulative behavior, but he remained cautious. Before we parted ways, Robert hesitated and said, there's something else you should know. Sarah's been asking about you and wants to apologize in person for everything she did. I told Robert I'd think it over but made no promises. In the days following, I couldn't shake the thoughts of what Robert had shared. I discussed it with my therapist, trying to navigate my emotions. On one hand, I had no obligation to meet Sarah or hear her out. Her actions had been unforgivable and I had every right to keep her out of my life. On the other hand, a small part of me wondered if hearing her apology might bring some closure. After much consideration, I decided to meet with Sarah. I figured facing it head-on was better than always wondering what if. I asked Robert to arrange the meeting, making it clear that this was a one-time occurrence. We met at a park on a Saturday. I chose a public park for our meeting, neutral ground to avoid any potential drama. When Sarah arrived, I noticed how different she looked, smaller and less confident. She sat on the bench next to me, maintaining a respectful distance. For a moment, we were silent. Then she took a deep breath and began. I know nothing I say can undo what I did, she started, but I want you to know how deeply sorry I am for everything, for the cheating, the lies, and for trying to trap you with a baby that wasn't yours. It was inexcusable, and I'll regret it for the rest of my life. 
She went on to explain that she had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which shed light on but didn't excuse her past behavior. She spoke about the intensive therapy she was undergoing, learning to manage her emotions and insecurities in healthier ways. I'm not sharing this to ask for forgiveness, she said. I know I don't deserve that. I just wanted you to know that I understand how much I hurt you and I'm doing everything I can to ensure I never treat anyone that way again. After she finished, I took a moment to collect my thoughts. I told her that while I appreciated her apology, forgiveness wasn't something I could offer, at least not yet. The wounds were still too fresh, and the betrayal too profound. However, I did express hope that she would continue her therapy and work on becoming a better person especially now that she was going to be a mother. Sarah nodded, thanking me for listening and agreeing to meet. As she got up to leave, she paused and said, I truly am happy for you. Robert told me about your promotion and about Emily. I hope things work out for you. You deserve to be happy. With that, she walked away. I remained on that bench for a long time, reflecting on what had just happened. It wasn't the dramatic showdown I might have imagined, but rather a quiet closing of a chapter, a final end to that part of my life. In the weeks since our meeting, I've spent a lot of time thinking about Sarah, our relationship and everything that transpired. I've come to realize that while I may never forgive her actions, I can release the anger I've been holding onto. It's not about excusing what she did, but about freeing myself from the negative emotions that have weighed me down. In my personal life, things are finally looking up. You might recall I mentioned some flirtation with Emily about a week after my meeting with Sarah, Emily and I decided to address the situation directly. We've chosen to explore a relationship with the understanding that we'll maintain professionalism at work and keep our boss informed to prevent any conflicts of interest. It's still early, but being with Emily feels refreshingly different from any past relationship. The trust and communication we have are levels beyond what I experienced with Sarah were taking it slow, aware of the potential challenges of dating a co-worker, but so far, things have been promising. My friends and family have been very supportive of this new development. Mike even joked that he'd seen Emily and me ending up together ever since the crazy ex-girlfriend incident at the office. My parents are just glad to see me happy again. Work is going smoothly as well. The project I'm leading is progressing well, and my team has come together effectively. It's gratifying to see the results of our hard work starting to show. Regarding Sarah and Robert, I've chosen to keep my distance. Robert occasionally updates me, which I appreciate, but I've made it clear that I don't want to be involved in their lives. I wish them well, particularly for the sake of their child, but that chapter is firmly closed for me. To everyone who's followed my story from the start, thank you for your support and advice. Your input was invaluable, especially during those challenging times right after I discovered Sarah's deception. I'm uncertain about the future. My relationship with Emily is still new and its direction remains to be seen. My career is on an upward path, but I know there will be hurdles ahead. Life is inherently unpredictable. However, for the first time in a long while, I'm genuinely excited about what's to come. I feel like I've been given a fresh start, a chance to apply all the lessons I've learned and build a life that's truly fulfilling. This will be my final update on this matter. It's time to close this chapter and focus on the future. Thanks again to everyone for your support throughout this tumultuous journey. Here's to new beginnings, hard-earned wisdom, and the endless possibilities that lie ahead. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.